Report. Our uh, first panel is entitled Turkish Politics, Quo Vadis. And um, looking in those directions, we will look at, uh, I think, four of the most uh, important litmus tests that one can have, another hot spot. Uh, following that, Didek uh, Chindolu of Columbia University, uh, near and dear to my heart. Uh, we'll talk about a very important topic as well, which is women and secularism. And uh, the litmus test uh, here is the headscarf band in Turkey. And last, uh, or at least repeat my own thanks, of the SETA uh, Insight Turkey series. Uh, I've been teaching uh, Turkish studies and Tur contemporary Turkey now for the last, uh, read it religiously. Uh, that's probably the wrong word, but secularly. Um, I, I, I really strongly recommend that you all do. It is a, a marvelous publication, and uh, it's, it's really uh, without fear in the field of Turkish studies. So at this point, I would like to uh, uh, turn the floor over to the Ben Kaker and uh, why Turkey needs a new constitution. Hindered the process in the Turkish parliament, and since then, we had to change uh, the Turkish constitution uh, in several ways, beginning with the uh, election procedure of the president. And we also know that the latest amendments were uh, ratified by a referendum. Uh, all these constitutional changes uh, were attempts, in fact, to solve the cri crisis. But I, I think Turkey needs a totally new constitution to become a fully democratic uh, state uh, in, in conformity with the contemporary standards of pluralist uh, or even, in fact, multicultural democracy. Uh, so to begin with, I mean, Turkish constitution has been uh, written down by a military uh, coup. Uh, this is the product of the workings of the military coup back in 1980, and it was written in a very authoritarian fashion, uh, and it is uh, incompatible with contemporary standards of democracy, so that is the main reason why Turkey needs a totally new constitution. Uh, and this constitution, written by the military in 1980, in 1982, uh, has been changed, uh, first amendment in 1987, and the final amendments were in uh, this year. So uh, all these changes uh, rendered this constitution uh, an inconsistent document within itself. So this is another important reason for uh, this argument that Turkey needs a totally new constitution. Uh, because our time is quite Restricted. I think I have to finish in uh, ten minutes from now. Uh, I I will focus. I would like to focus on some of the uh, specific uh, items within the constitution that needs to be rewritten uh, to accommodate this constitution uh, with the requisites of this democracy. Uh, to begin with, the preamble has to be rewritten because. It uh, portrays uh, the philosophy of the state, or kind of a state ideology that is embedded in this constitution, and it is totally incompatible with any kind of democratic uh, idea of rule of law. Uh, let me give you the example. Uh, let me just quote the first statement. In line with the concept of nationalism, and the reforms and principles introduced by the founder of the Republic of Turkey, Atatürk, the immortal leader and the unrivaled hero, this constitution, which affirms the eternal existence of the Turkish nation and motherland and the indivisible unity of the Turkish state. This statement, the, the first statement of the preamble of the Turkish constitution, clearly uh, portrays Turkish state as a nationalist state. So I, I think Turkey is now the only state within the European region which describes itself as a nationalist state. 
and you see this the impact of this nationalism throughout the uh, subsequent paragraphs of the preamble. Uh, in order to have this, I mean, this relatively long and nationalist preamble must be replaced by another preamble, maybe. The preamble is important because it's part of the Constitution and it has a legally binding force and it also functions as a kind of uh, a document, a normative, a norm embodying standards for uh, the jurisdiction uh, by the Constitutional Court, for example, uh, in, for example, deciding on party closure cases, etc. So, uh, just for comparison, maybe, the Spanish Constitution might be given as an example. Uh, Spain is an important country for Turkey because uh, for, from the political scientist's perspective, uh, the authoritarian tendencies in a Catholic society somewhat resemble to uh, the authoritarian and conservative tendencies in a uh, Muslim-majority country, let me say. Uh, and uh, Spain is also important, an important example for Turkey because Spain also has a party closure system, and Turkey also has a party closure system. And some, uh, let me say, uh, Kemalist hardliners in Turkey uh, give Spain as an example, uh, saying that, you see, it's not only Turkey that closes political parties, Spain is also another example that closes political parties. Uh, but in fact, the preamble of the uh, Spanish Constitution reads, uh, the Constitution protects all Spaniards and peoples of Spain in the exercise of human rights, their cultures and traditions, languages and institutions. Can we replace Spaniards and peoples of Spain with uh, the Constitution of Turkey protects all citizens or all nationals of Turkey and peoples of Turkey in the exercise of human rights, their cultures and traditions and etc. This might be an example of how we can think of rewriting uh, the preamble. Or maybe, uh, without going into mentioning the existence of different pupils in Turkish territory, uh, the German preamble, uh, just one sentence, uh, conscious of their responsibility before God and man, the German constitution says, inspired by the determination to promote world peace as an equal partner in a united Europe, the German people, in the exercise of their constituent power, have adopted this basic law. So this, this might be also another example for democratic preamble that describes uh, the ideology of the state uh, for new and democratic Turkey. That uh, put forward very clear inconsistencies uh, formulation, I think, implies that state is something different from the republic. And I think this state means the, sociologically speaking, here the state refers to the civilian and military bureaucracy that, uh, I mean, who regard themselves as the owners, kind of, or protectors of uh, the Turkish state. Uh, so this has to be uh, reformed.